Hi guys. So, um, as some of you may know, or some of you may not know, my son seven is going to be turning 13 in a few days. And I wrote something um, about just kind of like how I feel about having my little boy become a teenager. And I offered to share it with you guys. And a few people said they would like to hear it. So I'm going to read it for you guys. But first of all, I wanted to share something that I wrote a few years ago when he was getting ready to turn nine years old. And um, it's one of my favorite things that I've ever written just because obviously it's about my my little boy and my son so I want to share that with you first and then um, I'm gonna share this new thing that I wrote for him um, it's not really a poem it's just you know it started out as a journal entry and um, I don't know it's just me you know speaking from my heart about how I feel about my little boy growing up so um, I'm going to go ahead and share that with you guys now. Thanks for listening. Almost nine. How did this happen? I mean, it seems like just yesterday I was holding him in my arms, singing and rocking him to sleep. Now he's almost nine. He has opinions and preferences. He knows lyrics to songs and dance moves that I never knew existed. Girls are writing him love notes, calling him to profess their elementary infatuation, and he's totally disgusted by the whole thing, for now. He asked if he could take a bike ride, and I told him to go around the block. He is almost nine after all, and nine-year-olds can do stuff like that. Gone are the days of stay in my sight. He needs his independence, I know. When he falls, he can get up on his own, and I have to be okay with that. Everything he says is so important, so I must listen carefully as he talks and remind him to take a breath as he goes on and on about those very important thoughts. But as I listen so intently, I can't help but to notice his freckles and his stork bite, even though it's almost completely faded, and that tiny pinprick birthmark on his left ear. People wonder why he's so emotional. They don't understand his dramatics. But take a look at who raised him. There's no question he gets it from me. And along with all of that sensitivity comes a consideration and a compassion that most nine-year-olds don't have. And it's a pretty fair trade-off if you ask me. I am a very lucky mother of an almost nine-year-old boy who asks me every day if my day was good and who hugs me tight on the days when it isn't. And he still calls out to me when he's scared and he still lets me hug him and kiss him and he asks me to sing him our song as I tuck him into bed at night. My almost nine-year-old son, the love of my life. 13 years ago, before Seven was born, I was getting ready for one of the biggest events of my life. I was making final changes to the nursery. I was wondering what my life would be like with a little person to take care of. I felt that my life was so perfect. And I'm sure I was a little scared, but mostly excited. Little did I know that in just eight days, I'd be holding a miracle in my arms. 10 years ago, when Seven was turning three, I was recovering from the catastrophe of a failed marriage. I was learning how to be a single mom, and my sweet little boy, who was just learning to put together full sentences, was wise and compassionate beyond what's normal for his age. He would tell me with his little toddler lisp that I shouldn't be sad and that he loved me. I was having a very hard time but I knew that it was me and him against the world and I had to keep him safe from all that was out there. Seven years ago, when Seven was turning six, he started playing t-ball. If you ask me, he was the cutest kid out there by far. He decided he wanted a mohawk and he learned to tie his shoes. I couldn't have been prouder of this little kid and who he was becoming. He was finishing first grade and making new friends 
He was so shy and I knew it was hard for him to meet new people, but he was doing such a great job. At the time, his best friend was still his mom. And of course, I felt the same way about him. Four years ago, when Seven was turning nine, we were getting settled into a new house with another new guy. Sev hadn't had an easy few years. I admit that I didn't always make the best decisions when it came to men, and unfortunately, Seven was always on that emotional roller coaster with me. But here we were, putting all of our eggs into Jared's basket. The two of them were instant buddies, and I couldn't have been happier for him to have a guy to talk to, to horse around with, and to just be a boy with. And one year ago today, when Seven was turning 12, we had moved yet again, and we were settling into our new home in Beechwood. Seven had his first real girlfriend. They would ride their bikes to Starbucks and FaceTime, and arrange meetings at the playground. I had the talk with him and he assured me there was no funny business. He was settling into his position as first baseman on the baseball team and he was really, really good. He also became a new big brother and Eliza was the apple of his eye. My little baby was starting to become a man right before my very eyes. And now, here we are. I sit here writing this with tears in my eyes, remembering my boy just before his 13th birthday. I sometimes wonder how we got here. We've been through a lot together, good times and bad. I tell myself that his experiences up until this point have molded him into the compassionate, caring, sensitive boy that he is today. The bond that we share is like no other. After all, for a very long time, it was just me and him. And while we've added new members to our family, he knows that he always and will forever be my first love. And last night, as we were sitting next to each other at Playhouse Square, squished into those two tiny seats, watching a play that he's been wanting to see for over a year, he laid his head on my shoulder and snuggled in a bit. And I was reminded that no matter how old he gets, no matter what experiences we still have to experience, part of him will always be that little boy who would climb into bed with me in the morning and snuggle up for a few hours before we had to start our day. Who would play catch with me in the park for hours, even though I hit him in the face with the ball more than once. Who would give me a hug just because he knew I needed it and who would sing songs while playing every instrument he owned and dancing around in the living room in his underpants. And he will always have a place next to me where he can lay his head on my shoulder and snuggle in.